The Ordinary Discussion Podcast. At least when it comes to all the people listening to this podcast, I'm not sure what you've had to walk through, all the pain you have experienced, whether from people inside the church, whether from the world, or just from life. But what I want you to know is that there is a God, that He loves you so much. He wants to have a relationship with you, and He is bigger than any situation that you are in. He wants to heal you. He wants to help you. And I would just encourage you to continue to just seek Him, because God is real. If you ask Him, like, Lord, I want to know you. I want to experience you. That is a, that's a prayer that he will answer. All right, let's do this. Um, here again with Colton Erpo. Um, really nothing has changed because we're sitting in the same spot yeah. from part one. So this is part two of uh, our discussion about um, Colton going to heaven and his mm-hmm. experience there. And um, so if you haven't listened to part one, uh, I would encourage you to do that before you listen to part two. Um, I just want to say uh, welcome to our listeners. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for uh, listening to the podcast. It, it really does support not only um, – increasing the kingdom of God and, and pointing people to Jesus, but it also hopefully will be uh, something that supports ordinary men and uh, is a way that we can uh, create community among the, uh, the, the groups and the people in ordinary men. So if you, uh, if you're enjoying the podcast, please rate us. Five stars are great. Uh, share us on your social media platforms and such. And uh, obviously you can watch us on YouTube as well. I mentioned the last podcast that, uh, we're on YouTube now, and uh, we have a new uh, new studio that I think looks pretty good. Um, yes. And uh, hopefully we'll be adding even more improvements to that. We have a new f- uh, 4K camera. So, uh, yeah, super excited. Trying to uh, increase the professionalism of what we're doing. I figure if we're professional and we look the look, then my performance won't matter as much. Hey, we can try to be professional. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We can be professional. I just don't know. I mean... You still have to listen to me. That's easy. Ah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. it'll be fine, I guess. Uh, that's why I have to have good guests on that are very uh, interesting, like yourself. People that have been to heaven. That that that'll make yeah. people listen, right? That's the hope. I would I would hope so too. <laughs> I would hope so too. Well, hey, let's dive in. Like I said, if you haven't listened to the 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 first podcast, we just kind of talked around. Um, hey, did this really happen or not? And um, how do you know what happened and how do you know it wasn't a dream? And what do you, what do you say to people that are doubters? And so I think it was a good podcast. I enjoyed it, but I'm really looking forward to getting to this one as well. This podcast is going to go from, um, a different perspective, which we're going to ask questions about specifically about heaven. Mm-hmm. And so one of my favorite topics to talk about a close second, or at least not really a close second, but second on the list would be superheroes. I am a superhero nerd. Fun fact, but yeah, heaven's definitely, <laughs> Well, I'm not really into superheroes, but I'm into heaven. So we've got one thing in common for sure. Um, there we go. So we're going to take the viewpoint here, not from a skeptic, but from a I'm full in. I want to hear all about what you experienced, right? So all right. Um, so we've already gotten past that in, in the first episode uh, or the first part. I will say I've heard a few things from you, mm-hmm. and I'm like um, – I don't know. I, I don't know what the word is. I mean, I, I, I believe in Perplexed. spiritual, I believe in spiritual gifts. I believe in mm-hmm. some, in those things. I'm not a cessationalist. I, I'm not like, I don't think anything like that can happen in today. I believe, mm-hmm. uh, in acts, uh, we read about that. There's going to be more and more, uh, prophecies and, mm-hmm. and, um, and visions and such and as miracles, and all miracles that in stuff. the end times. And so mm-hmm. uh, we're going to have more of that, not less of that. But there's going to be things you say, yeah. and I'm just going to say it. Like when you say things about, well, I'm not going to say that are going to be like, "Are you sure, man?" But it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna do this. This is this is ordinary, ordinary discussions. discussions. So yes, I welcome it. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to question it. We're going to talk about it, and we're gonna. It's just it's going to be interesting, I think. But then I have some other questions uh, as well that I think will be, um, I think, very interesting people. So I'm going to start with this one. 
you were talking about your, you saw your sister in heaven. Mm -hmm. She died of a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And then when you saw her, she was, how old do you think she was? Oh, she was a little bit older than me. So, uh, between my sister and I, my sister was like five or six. So she was aging at the rate that she would have aged. Yeah. Okay. Cause she was yeah. like, you were two and a half years apart. Or so something like how it goes, or at least. My, yeah. So how do people age? That's where I'm so going with this. How do people age in my, heaven? my understanding from when I was three in heaven. Um, that's actually a fun little thing that I joke with my friends all the time. Cause they'll ask me these like deep theological questions or they'll ask me a bunch of these like really thought or deep questions. And I'm like, I was three. I didn't ask those questions. Oh yeah. I mean, I that's the thing there. we got to keep that in perspective. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you saw it through the lens of a three year old. Yes. Right. Of course. But how I remember how at least how it looked in heaven is like all the adults in heaven. Wait, so are you yeah. younger than you are or older than you are? I mean, if you if you were in heaven for a period of time, does that mean that you're not actually I've, the age that you think you, know, you are? You know, these are all great questions. That's a great question. I've actually thought about that. I'm like... Well, it'd only be three Am minutes. I, you said it was only three minutes. In, in, well, that's three minutes. That's three minutes earth time. Yeah, like, but that's all we're talking about is earth age. Oh, yeah. oh, I thought so, you... Okay. Because who knows? I could be like a... 25 year old spiritually in a 21 year old body. I don't know. This is just my kids say that I am a five year old in a 42 year old body. Hey, that's, that's all right. Yeah. I, th I actually appreciate that. Um, but so when it comes to like how old people are in heaven or how they look, um, I mentioned my great grandpa and when he passed away, he was in his sixties. But when I saw him in heaven, he was in like his prime, like late 20s, early 30s. So when it comes to adults, that's around the age that they're at because the only reason why... Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. So you're saying I'm not in my prime right now? Because <laughs> um, I, I think in that maybe, aside from my hairline and some wrinkles, some gray... Well, okay, I'm not in my prime. Well... I'm not there. That's so what you, I... You're, so you're saying 20s... You're saying well, you top out... You're saying what you saw in heaven when people were topping out in 20s to 30s. Well, that's at least what I could, like, recognize. I mean, when Jesus went up to heaven, he was 33. So that's another thing I'm basing it off of as well. But that's, like, later on, Colton as an adult looking back, like, why did I say that? Oh, Jesus was 33 when he was in heaven. Okay. But... Yeah, but is Jesus the same age when he's in heaven as he was when he was on earth? Because when I die, I'm he, not going to be the same age. Well, he looks similar. But the only reason why we age is because of sin. So when we're in heaven, we there's no sin, so there's no aging, there's no death. But I have to start somewhere. You do have to start somewhere, but it's almost like when you get to that, like, your prime, you, like, stop aging, and Dude, you just you've got stay like, there. you've got, like, four or five years of your life. Like, you're there. You're, tw you're turning 22. You're almost in, like, you're, like, prime. I'm about ready to become an old man. We'll see. Yeah, you got, like, eight years until you're, like, not even, like, heaven-worthy. <sighs> Age, age hey, wise. We'll we'll see. You're heaven worthy, but age wise you're not. But yeah, I remember everybody in heaven, they were young, like everybody had energy, everybody was healthy. Um, there is one question that people have asked me that I feel like is just a very sarcastic question, but some people are asking it very serious. Cause when they're like, We're healthy in heaven, does that mean we're skinny? <laughs> I'm like, Why are you even asking that question? Like well, what? I think that's a more what? legit question than some of the other ones you told me. Well, are we skinny in heaven? That's hey, I everybody's healthy in heaven, so I don't know what exactly that means, but yeah. But it's kind of cool because when it comes to my sister, at least when it comes to the kids in heaven, they age in heaven kind of how they would down here on earth. So they start off as a kid and grow up in heaven. I mean, in heaven, I had to go to school, which... I mean, at the time, it was just funny because... Wait, wait you went to school in yeah. heaven? School, but why do you have to learn anything? School is inescapable even in death. But why Why would... See, that's weird to me. Why, why would you need to learn something in heaven? Well, in heaven, you're always learning. Like, you never stop learning. Similar to, like, being down here on earth, like, at least for me, just got a job as an electrician. If you haven't checked out part one, you totally should. Talk about it a little bit. But when it comes to, like, even my job as an electrician, you're always learning something new. There's always a new code. There's always a new thing. Like, one of the newer things now is, like, solar. 
I don't know what's going on with that, but it's, it's kind of cool. It's the sun. I know it's the sun, <laughs> but it doesn't really work too well yet. Um, but it's kind of cool because in heaven, you have an eternity to spend time with God and learn about him, learn about his character. So you're up there learning. The so whole you time. don't just know everything. No. In your experience. No. I don't want to have to learn anything new. Well, we yeah, we all have to learn something new sometimes. Yeah, I, know, so. I do all the time. No, but, you, always yeah. to, you always have to be learning. In heaven, I went to school, but on the plus side, Jesus was my teacher. So that's a pretty good trade off. Um, but with the adults in heaven, like nobody was bored in heaven. Wait, wait, Jesus was your te what was that again? Say that again. Yeah, Jesus was my teacher in heaven. Okay. See, but that's just that's just hard for me to comprehend in the sense that I mean, there's millions of kids in heaven. Mm -hmm. So, like, is is Jesus just all over the place? Like, yeah, how did he... That's a great question. How did he have time to spend with you when you were in heaven? Because he... I'm assuming everybody has the same experience of being with Jesus, but there's only one Jesus. I have no idea. All I know is he is God. I am not. I'll leave that up to him. But when you were spending time with God or Jesus... Mm -hmm. I mean, what were other, were they like jealous that you were with him? And I guess not. I mean, jealousy probably doesn't no, exist. No, no, jealousy's not up there. Uh, but well, it says God's jealous, but maybe that's just different. Uh, yeah. Okay. Know. Okay. Those, well, those are all good questions, but yeah, I don't know. I you didn't were th three. I didn't I think it. to ask those questions while I was up there. What is your opinion of the age of accountability based on what you saw in heaven? So, so for example, mm -hmm. You know, somebody dies in the womb, okay, or somebody dies when they're 15. Mm -hmm. What, Based on what you experienced, what do you think the age of accountability is? I have no idea, and I have not looked into it enough to give an accurate response. I just know that at some point, all of us, like, uh, I shared one verse, or, yeah, it's a verse by Paul where it's talking about, like, I used to think like a child, thought like a child, reason like a child, but now I've put that away and become a man. So I think there is a moment in everybody's life where it's basically you are now held accountable for your own actions. Mm -hmm. Everything you do, it's on you anymore. You can't blame your parents. You can't blame anybody else. You're the one who has to take control of your life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important. That's a very key. Do I know when that happens? No. Yeah. Is it like a set age? I have no idea, but I do think it is very important that we do hold ourselves accountable to what, how we live our lives. Well, it's interesting that you say people age through like 20s, maybe early 30s. Mm -hmm. I've never really thought about the age of accountability in this sense. I always thought it was younger than this, but mm -hmm. I was recently reading and I highly recommend Vernon McGee through the Bible with Vernon McGee as a study tool for reading the word. And when I was reading recently in Deuteronomy, I think it was, <clears throat> no, it was, it was back in, in Exodus, but when the 12 spies went mm -hmm. in, into the promised land, they came back, 10 said, we can't beat them mm -hmm. to Joshua and, and Caleb said they could. Well, then the Israelites agreed with the doubters, the 10, mm -hmm. and then God said, anyone 20 years or older will never enter the promised land. Anybody mm -hmm. 20 years or younger will. And so there's an argument that I heard made, and this is a sidetrack, that maybe the age of accountability is 20. It's interesting because I always thought it would be younger than that. Uh, we'll never know the answer. It's not a debate. Well, I just think it's an interesting thought when you think about heaven and you're seeing people I think another and, thing to think about, at least with the context of like Old Testament, they also live to be really old. Like, I mean... When you also read the story like Caleb, the dude was 85 when he finally got to go into the promised land and he oh, yeah. started killing giants. Like, that man's cool. Yeah. But, like, yeah, you get to see a bunch of stuff. Like, even reading through Genesis, like, seeing how long people lived, it's like, what did they used to eat? That stuff's amazing. Like, wow, 800? I'm lucky if I'll make it to 100. Yeah. But yeah, no, I agree. Uh, it, it's it's fascinating, and then there's a lot of different theories about why that could happen with the atmosphere and such. But we're not mm -hmm. talking about Earth, talking about heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Sidetrack. on that, did you do you know if you met? I know you're three and a half. Uh, did you 
meet any Bible of the, characters? Any Bible characters? Yeah, I did. So when it comes to characters from the Bible that I did meet in heaven, like it's weird. I remember meeting them. I don't remember what they look like. I don't remember what we talked about. But then how do you know you met them? What makes you know that? Do you know the names of any of them? Yeah. Uh, so the Bible characters I did get to meet in heaven were King David. You met King Samson, David. Mm-hmm. The apostles, Peter and John. But you John. don't know what they look like. I don't remember oh, what they dude, look you're like. You're killing me. I want to um, know what King David looked hey, like. Hey, you'll find out one day. He was handsome um, and ruddy. There you go. That's what the word of what does that even mean, handsome and ruddy? It sounds like contradictory terms to me, but whatever. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, so King David, Samson, the apostles, Peter and John, Mary, Jesus' mom, John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin. Uh, and then so I also so got this, to, this, side yep. of me, this side of me is coming. So if you don't mm-hmm. remember their faces, and you, how do you know you met them? You just... I just know. You just know. Yeah. I don't really have that great of an answer, to be honest, but... Yeah, I'm not how, trying to put you on the spot. Oh, yeah. Well, how my memories of heaven go... I did that last last, that was the last part. <laughs> hey, it's all good. But it's weird, because how my memories of heaven work, because this did happen, like, 18, 19 years ago. Um, it's almost like it. my memories of heaven are in, like, three to four categories. And... The first category is like what I remember vividly or like what I do remember and I talk about a lot and let people know like, hey, this is what I saw. This is what I experienced. Um, there's a second part of that where it's like it's like in here or it's like in me. I know. I have no idea how I know. I just know. It's hard to describe, but it's like I know because I know because I know. But yeah. I don't know how I know. Uh, the third one is I have some memories where like I got to experience heaven, but God kind of knew that I would like just blurt out everything I saw. So he like took some of my memories and like almost locked them away. Like they're kind of like locked away. And then occasionally I get to like experience something new or like just share something about heaven. Like sometimes, or I remember one time I shared a conversation I had with Jesus. And for me, it's like, oh yeah, I remember that. And then when... Uh, like my family started talking with me. They're like, you've never shared that one before. And this is like when I was 14. Wow. So I was like, huh, well, that's cool. So yeah, I get to have little moments like that. Or even times when I'm reading scripture, like I'll read like a prophecy or a vision in like Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, something like that, where they see the throne room of God. And it's like, oh, I saw that. That's cool. I remember that. So like little moments like that. And then there's a fourth category where I did experience or see things in heaven and I'm not allowed to talk about it. So I don't, but yeah. Yeah. The apostle Paul says that Mm -hmm. in, we talked about it last time, second Corinthians 12. Hey, I feel like I have to say this in case Mm -hmm. somebody hasn't gone back and listened to the first one first. Yes. I'm here with Colton Burpo. Oh, hi. Colton. And I said that before, but Colton Mm -hmm. has had a book written about his, his journey to heaven. He, he, as a child, Mm -hmm. had a near death experience or, Maybe a death experience into heaven and back. I don't know. Um, Technically, no. I never died. You never died. So never near died. death. Okay. So a near death experience. Yeah, I could have just asked you and said, I don't know. And so the book the book is Heaven is for Real. Mm-hmm. And many of you have either read the book or seen the movie or heard about it. And Heaven is for Real has sold over 12 million copies. It's the fastest selling Christian book of all time. Mm-hmm. It's a New York Times bestseller for 182 consecutive weeks. Number one New York Times bestseller for 75 weeks. Um, and like, Oh, the movie was released. Heaven is for real in April, 2014 mm-hmm. with amazing success it, 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 approaching 104 million at the box office, which is 700% of the film's budget, which is, which is pretty incredible. So that's who is talking right now about heaven. So it puts a little bit in perspective. What the heck are they talking about? This guy's been to heaven. So if you want some backstory, go listen to part one. And if you want even more backstory, I would encourage you to buy the book and read it or, uh, watch Heaven is for Real. You can get it on Prime or Netflix, I think, right? I know it is coming Prime. out on Pure Flix soon, but oh, really? I don't know if anybody has like a Pure Flix account or anything. Yeah, those ex- <laughs> they do no, exist. Have they do exist. People have them. Um, but yeah, I actually What's just the other did one? VidAngel, some... I think it's called? Vid I Angel have or something no like that. idea. I think there's one that, that like VidAngel that you can like watch movies and they take all the the bad stuff out of them. 
Hmm. Um, but anyhow, interesting. So that's what we're talking about. In case I probably should have said that ahead of time. So okay, that's you said right. something I got to get to the okay. throne room. Yes, tell me more. All right. So the throne room in heaven is where God the Father is. The really cool thing about him is there's the like children's nursery rhyme where it's like he's got the whole world in his hands. Yeah. So God the Father. He's big enough to have the whole world in his hands. Like, he's massive. And it's really cool because for him... Wait, he's in a human, like, like a, for like lack a, of better terms, a like human Like a form? humanoid form, but big. Very big. Like, like they have flesh. Like, God has flesh, mm-hmm. you would say. And what I remember is when he s- sat on his throne, he had this, like, white robe. He had this yellow sash and he had these two massive wings and the cool thing about god the father is or at least he was really bright and really big so it was really hard to see his face but the cool thing about heaven is there is no night there is no day and god and jesus light up all of heaven so yeah when you get to experience god the father i remember when i walked into the throne room you would think that a three-year-old would be scared of something that huge. Oh, yeah. But you could just feel how much God loved you, almost like radiate off of him. It was, It is something amazing and something that you don't get to experience until you walk in that throne room. Like, it is so cool. So I always envision heaven as being more like in Revelation, like just this crystal sea, people bowing and worshiping, singing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, Mm -hmm. is worthy. Mm -hmm. Like, I almost envisioned, like, this is what heaven's going to be. I'm going to go there. And this is actually exciting to me. Mm -hmm. It's not like a bummer. Yeah. It's not going to be like regular life. It's going to be like, I'm going to be there, and all I want to do is worship God. Because I know when I'm in worship on earth, and when I feel the presence of God in my life, there's no better place that I've ever been. Mm -hmm. Like, like it, it truly... The closer I get to God, the more I experience it, the more I just long to be in that place. So then, like, when I was young, somebody would say this, and I'd be like, oh, that I don't want to go to heaven. Now I'm like, man, that sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. And I, I envision going to heaven, and I envision not being able to do anything but to stand in awe mm-hmm. and worship our Lord and Savior. It sounds like to me what you're saying is that's not what it's like. No, that is that is very much what it's like, but... I mean, but I thought I you were like on a swing set at school. So there's well, times of that, times that are not that. I mean, it's eternity. So you have <laughs> forever. Yeah, I guess that is something, isn't an eternity. Um, yeah, this but, time thing makes it tough. I mean, yes. I'm looking at through this 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 window of earth. Yeah. But it's really cool because in heaven, or at least in the throne room, or <laughs> in eternity. all of in all of heaven, music is always going on. Like really? worship is always going on. You can always hear it. Um, and it's just really cool because, yeah, in the throne room, you do have God the Father. And it's really cool because you do get to see like a lot of the, or at least I remember when I was in the throne room, to his right, oh, I just hit the table, to his right sat Jesus, or at least that's where Jesus sat. Um, and to his left sat Gabriel, the archangel. Um, then I remember that, like Michael, the archangel, he had a place that he sat. Um, and then the Holy Spirit, he kind of had like an area. He didn't really have like a seat because he doesn't have a body. Um, and then there's a pile of rubble, which used to be Lucifer's throne in the throne room. And it's just really cool because when I was in the throne room, I remember. So you're saying mm-hmm. that the, the pile of rubble is still there when you were there? Yes, the pile of rubble is still there. Lucifer is not in heaven. He got kicked out of heaven to earth that's why the earth sucks but yeah um <laughs> this is us talking about this i mean i i'm trying to keep this it's already 23 minutes i said i was trying to keep this 30 minutes i, I have so many questions hey, i warned you uh, when you try and put like a time restriction on this yeah. like 20 minutes 25 minutes and especially when it's very I would say informal like this, it yeah. just is going to keep going. Well, here's the deal. I try, I, every, I, I keep thinking, man, I need to do like 20 to 30 minute podcasts. More people would listen. 
And every time I do a podcast, it goes 45 minutes to an hour. Hey. Sorry, guys. Hopefully you, hopefully that's not a bad thing. Hopefully it's interesting. Especially on this one. Okay. I'm going to bounce around, ask all kinds of questions. Did Jesus call you by name? Yeah. He called me Colton. Okay, what did... <laughs> this is a stupid question. <laughs> what did he wear? Okay. So uh, how about I hit you with like two answers for this question? Uh, I'll tell you what Jesus looked like and what the Holy Spirit looked like, or at least what I remember they looked like. Okay. Okay. Um, so what I remember with Jesus, or at least how I would describe Jesus, is he's God, but he's our size. So he basically is the size of a man. Um, how I remember he looked like he had brown hair, he had a brown beard, he had these beautiful bluish green eyes, and he had a smile brighter than any that I've ever seen. Uh, he had a robe of white, and he had like this sash of purple. And with Jesus, he still had his markers in heaven, or the wounds in his hands and the tops of his feet from I was when he was ask crucified. That, so he had the scars. He still has his scars, or I called them his markers. Um, and it's really cool because for him, like he's very approachable. You can talk with him, and he's like he's really awesome. Um, <laughs> I would think. <laughs> and it's just cool because, yeah. All right, I okay. Got to move on to next one. So the Holy Spirit. Now, one thing that you kind of asked the question in part one, but I didn't get to answer it because I kind of went on a tangent. But with the Holy Spirit, how I remember seeing him, or at least when he manifests, because with the Holy Spirit, he's kind of that form of God that is omnipresent, or at least he's everywhere at the same time. When he's manifested, it's a different thing. That's when you know he's there. Um. And how I remember what he looked like, he looked, he didn't have a body, but he was kind of this like bluish fog or this bluish flame that moved. And when it comes to the Holy Spirit, he's hard to see, but you can feel it when he's there. And for me, how I describe what it feels like to feel when the Holy Spirit is around is it's almost like someone takes like warm honey and like just drips it down the back of your neck and it goes all throughout your body. You get like these good chills all throughout your body. And it's, I don't really know how to describe it, but like that. And it's really cool because I get to, or at least moments here on earth, I have moments where I have like something like that will happen. I'm like, Oh, what's about ready to happen. Something cool is about to happen. So, and yeah, the Holy spirit is really awesome. So, uh, (laughs) this is just a funny question. Mm -hmm. What, what sneakers did Jesus wear? I asked that. I don't know if you guys, <laughs> there's a big thing on celebrity pastors. It's called uh, preachers, preachers, and sneakers. preachers oh, and sneakers. I, I love that social media site. Oh my gosh. It's these preachers wearing like, like thousands of dollars well, of pairs of shoes. What and, it is, is, or at least what I've learned of it, because <laughs> I actually was so interested in it. So I, I figured Jesus to, has to be wearing I listened to preacher a po- sneakers. I listened to a podcast of the guy who created Preachers and Sneakers. I did too the other day. And it, he's just a funny guy. He's just like, yeah, originally I was thinking of like doing it, but then I'm like, you know, I could make this into a joke and just have some fun with it. Yeah. And it's like, it is eye-opening or it's like, oh, okay. But at the same time, it's like, this dude's just having fun. Why it, can't, it, it, it's just a joke. Have fun with it. Well, it's a joke, but there's a lot of... Yeah. I, I know. Don't get there's, me started. There's a lot of gray area in between, but the yeah. posts are really funny. You should oh, check it out. That's it, a shout out. Well, kinda. it'll probably upset you as much as it'll make you laugh. But anyhow, I had to throw it in there. So I don't... So Jesus doesn't do wear not, a preacher's do not remember. Or Rolexes, but huh? The thing is, with everybody in heaven, I do remember everybody in heaven had wings, except for Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that one blows me away. Mm-hmm. I almost don't want to believe that because I don't. I don't really want wings. Why not? I don't know. You get to walk or fly everywhere. Like you don't get these little baby wings. You get like big wings. They have to support your body weight. And uh, it just seems weird to me. I don't really care. When I'm in heaven, I won't. I won't give a rat's. But uh, what kind of restaurants are in heaven? <laughs> Uh, I don't remember restaurants, but I do remember eating. Fu- Chang's, I, I remember eating food in heaven. So, like, I remember eating pizza and mac and cheese because those were my favorite foods at the time. So but, there, you do eat. Yeah, there's food in heaven. Mm, I mean, thank God. the Lord talks. And there's not fat people, so I can eat all I want. You know, I don't know with that one. Oh man, I, I was three. That would be I didn't. I didn't think about that. I'll, I'll make sure next time I'm up there to ask yeah. God. 
Can we just eat and not get fat? I'll probably get there before you. You're a little younger than me. Did, I'll let you know when you get there. Okay. okay. Uh, did you see mansions? Um, I saw buildings. I saw houses. So, like, yeah. Did people have crowns with jewels in them? Um, I don't really remember, like, Like, the there's crowns. references of that in I, the Bible. I do know that. Uh, one thing that everybody in heaven has, um, it's not like the halo that people have. It's more like a flame. It's just like above their head. Everybody in heaven had that. Yeah, that's like the Holy Spirit, huh? Mm-hmm. On their lives, yeah. Or on their souls or whatever they have up there. Mm-hmm. Streets of gold? Yeah, they're up there. <laughs> you sound disappointed. Well, here's the thing. That is one of the few things that the Bible talks about where it's like the streets of gold. So I get asked so many times, it's like, did you see the streets of gold? I'm like, yeah, they're there. Yeah, but I, mean, as, I understand. A, These questions are well, probably. I also go a as a three year old. I didn't just look down at the ground all the time, like that's some nice gold. I'll be honest with you. As a forty two year old, I I'm know. like forty three, uh, whatever I am, I won't call myself forty two. I think I'm forty three. As a forty three year old, I um, I don't know that I would not recognize any of this. Like I really that that's what blows me away about your experience is, I would expect it to be this. I don't remember anything, but I remembered experiencing God. And I sort of hear some of that, but you were three mm-hmm. years old. It's a, it's a completely mm-hmm. different, I just, I don't even, I, it may be like halfway through, uh, halfway through eternity. That doesn't exist, but it could be like half, like it could be a long time before I even open my eyes to the point that there's anything other than God. I hope, I hope it's just this, I hope I just worship him and glorify him and, 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 and just spend time in his presence. Mm-hmm. But again, What do I know? I've never been to heaven. You have. Okay, here's a question for you. I'm not the expert. I just know a few things. So, well, you've been, (laughs) I don't know many people that have uh, an account of going to heaven. Um, So abortion. Mm -hmm. So all those babies are in heaven, you believe? They are. Yeah. Hmm. Well, praise God for that. Yeah. Breaks your heart. It does. I Um, mean... That's one of the, or at least one of the groups that we do get to talk with, minister to with our story is not only families that have had miscarriages, but also those who have had abortions because they willingly chose that they didn't want their kid. And I believe that whoever, whoever tried to convince people that abortion is moral or abortion is good, like... They're just wicked and evil, and I'm just going to say that. I could say more words, but, you know, I try not to say those words a lot, but you could. Um, But, yeah, and it's just really cool because we get to interact with these men and women who are just hurting because that does affect you, even though some people might say, no, it doesn't. It does. Yeah. And when you are able to be able to help them just reconcile or just go, hey, you're not your mistakes. And the amazing thing is, is if Satan convinced you to do this thing while you were here on earth, you give your life to Jesus, you follow him, and you get to go to heaven, he's going to restore any relationship yeah. that was lost here. Interesting. Yeah, that's great. So there was this girl named, she she painted pictures. Akiana Kramerik. I'm glad you said it. Yeah. Uh, so she is the one who painted, uh, a picture. Is it's called it? the Prince of Peace. Yep. That is the one. Is that really what he looks like? That's what I remember him looking like. Can you guys see this on the screen? They, so, pro- they probably won't be able to see it well, too well. We're going to do it. So that's, so you say that's the Jesus you saw. Mm-hmm. And, and then tell me the story about that picture. So now with this picture, it's called the Prince of Peace. It's painted by a girl named Akiana Kramerik. And the cool thing about her story is if people start talking about how, for me, of course I went to heaven because I'm a pastor's kid. Um, If you look at... Is that how that works? (sighs) (laughs) Because I could... I I have some experiences that may contradict the pastor's kids. Hey, hey. I know. Pastor's kids get a bad rap. We need a support group or something. Uh, But... The cool thing is with her story, her like her dad was a agnostic or didn't believe in anything and her mom was an atheist. 
And when she was four years old, Jesus just started showing up in visions, started talking with her. And she painted that picture when she was eight years old. So I still draw stick figures. I, I'm <laughs> That was eight not, years old? Yeah, she was eight years old when she painted the Prince of Peace. But but the story and, was what? You saw that picture? Yeah. And so, you were like, yeah, go. I don't, um, I don't need to tell the story. You can. <laughs> so Eight years old. With the stories. That? Really? Are you serious? So as a pastor's kid, I spent many times in other churches, in nursing homes, in hospitals, in funeral homes, many of those places. And there are pictures of Jesus everywhere. So one of the things that I would say when I was younger is I would tell my dad, yeah, when I pray, I see a face. I know who I'm praying to. So my dad was like, that's not fair. I want to know what Jesus looked like. Yeah. So he would take me to all these pictures and just ask me, so Colton, is this what Jesus looked like? No, his hair's too long. No, his skin color's wrong. No, his eyes are wrong. Like, just blunt and honest. And Yeah, they're normally like white guys. I know. Yeah, I I, mean, he's a little more white than I would wanted to see. I was hoping he'd be a little more well, Middle he Eastern. Was, he is Middle Eastern. I know, At least he's looks, half Middle that Eastern. That looks like more white. But hey, who am I to say what Jesus should look I like? I don't know. I just, I was hoping, I don't know why I was hoping. I don't know. I don't know. I just assumed, like, whatever. But, <laughs> so my dad finally changed the question to like, all right, Colton, what's wrong with this picture? And then I would always find something. So uh, one of my dad's friends saw Akiana Kramerik doing an interview with this painting. And she just or she or he, I don't remember which one of my dad's friends, but sent a email, just sending the link like, hey, this girl sounds a lot like Colton. Take a look at this. So my dad watched the interview, looked at all of it, and was like, okay, Colton, come here. Take a look at this. Again, no context, Didn't no preface nothing. it at Didn't all. Didn't preface. He's like, Colton, look at this. I look, and I just look at it. And then my dad asked me a few times, like, Colton, What's wrong with this picture? No answer. Finally, he goes, Colton, are you going to answer me? And I'm like, Dad, that's right. Really? And the really amazing thing about this is when it comes to, like, Heaven is for Real, the story has been out for about 11 years now, and we have had this picture in our book for all those 11 years. We have it on the movie. Like, it's been put around the world, and... At least people who have like written to our ministry who have had heaven encounters and experienced or like have seen Jesus. I think to my memory, I remember there was one saying that wasn't what Jesus looked like. But then later in the letter, he claimed to be Jesus. So mm, <laughs> I have issues. That's funny. Um, I got I got to interrupt. <laughs> don't, don't go back to where you were. But we were in Maui uh, this November, uh -huh. and there was a guy uh, on a bike, okay. and he had a big banner. Okay. It said, uh, I am Jesus. And then when we would go into Lahaina, he would like stand on the street. Maybe some of you guys are listening have experienced this guy. He would be on the street corner and, uh, he did kind of look a little bit. No, he didn't look like this guy. He didn't look like Jesus, but, um, but a little bit maybe, but he would claim that he was Jesus. And it really like, I didn't, I, I would like ask him questions and like, I'll be like, well, can you tell me about the Bible? You could, I'm like, but you, but the word of God is inspired by you and you can't. So it really bothered me. I felt like I had to like stand up to this guy cause he was like blaspheming Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyhow, when you said the guy said he was Jesus, I wonder yeah. if it's the same guy. But I'm I sure am, there's a lot of people that no say they're idea. Jesus. But, but but it was crazy because every time we would go into Lahaina to eat, um, mm -hmm. or we would see him on the on the side of the road, like with a sign, mm -hmm. my kids and wife would laugh because they would know I wanted to pull over they so would just bad. Know it makes your skin crawl. Oh yeah, I'm like you're not Jesus. But we've had hundreds of thousands of people write into us saying I saw Jesus and that's what he looked like. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Wow. So. I have been able to like, or at least just with a lot of people who have had heaven experiences, because uh, that's one thing that you and I talked about a little bit off air, didn't really talk on air, but there are a lot of people who have had heaven encounters or who have had visions of heaven who, are, who have experienced heaven, but they don't really share it with people um, because when you do, it does kind of put you in the limelight. Oh, it opens or, up. Yeah, it opens, it opens up a, up lot, of a lot of a lot of things you might not want. So it's kind of fun because at least with our story, since it's in a bright yellow book, I mean, that's 
what I tell people when they're like, what's the difference between your experience and like other people's having experiences? Mine's in a bright yellow book. Um, <laughs> it was it was a kid's experience, but it's really cool because I get to like talk with those people and they basically talk with me and they're like, you won't think I'm crazy. I'm like, you think I'm normal? And, and, I and you guys confirm too. stories. Mm -hmm. You do. So your cool your stories confirm. We're able to kind of talk through a few things and for those or for the people who have had visions or dreams or seen supernatural stuff, they just talk with me and some of the stuff might be interesting but other things like it's like yeah that's that's what heaven yeah. is like and even just giving them that assurance where it's like okay i'm not crazy Whew. well that's interesting mm -hmm. so it, like that picture and mm -hmm. some other things that have happened in your life mm -hmm. so uh, i've talked like i'm a i'm a you know trust but verify person okay. like it's I, I it's just it's tough there's no way to verify this like but here's where what happened you do you say stuff like this you show me this picture mm -hmm. and you're like thousands of people have seen it this girl you know painted when she was eight the first time i saw it without any uh prefacing i i, I knew exactly who it was you mm -hmm. know your sister your grandfather's picture there's things that like it's like it's hard to explain it away and, and so it brings a lot of validity to, to your story. And, and so I, I think it's great. Um, I, I really appreciate you talking about it um, and, and just opening up to, to ordinary discussions about it. I, I look forward to outside of this podcast, even mm -hmm. talk more about it, but, but let's go ahead and wrap this up. Okay. And, and I would just say this, um, tell us in five to 10 minutes, um, anything that you think the, the most cool things that, that you, that we haven't talked about that mm -hmm. maybe our listeners would want to want to hear. And then, then I'll kind of well, send us off. Um, I'll probably start it off with just like a cool thing. And then I'll kind of go into like more of like what I like telling people or I like telling people all this stuff. But one thing that I did get to see in heaven, cause I got to interact with angels in heaven and there are many different types of angels, but I got. What to do they look like? Uh, some of the angels they look humanoid, or they look like us. But you can tell the difference between people and angels because angels are a lot bigger than us. So, uh, when I was younger, I didn't know like how tall stuff was. I measured it by my dad, and I don't know if you've met my dad or not, but he's not that tall. Uh, but he's like five seven, and I remember when I described to my dad what angels look like. I'm like, well, they look kind of like you, but they were like, they were a little bit bigger. Like normal angels were like one and a half times the size of my dad. The Archangel Gabriel was a little bit bigger. And then the Archangel Michael was twice the size of my dad. And the cool thing about Michael was his flaming sword. That thing was cool. So <laughs> the blade of the sword was as tall as my dad. The handle, as long as his arm. And it was always on fire. I remember when I first saw that thing, I went, can I have one? You do get told no in heaven. Uh, they said I'd be too dangerous with it. But, yeah, there's a lot of really cool things you get to experience in heaven. Uh, one, like, one question that everyone always asks me for whatever reason is, is my pet in heaven? Like, that is the most asked question I get all the time. Isn't that weird, maybe? I... Like, is it the first question or is it down the road question? Um, you'd be surprised. I, I get asked that question a lot. Now that just makes me wonder, like, if that's your first question about heaven, maybe, I don't know. I just, <laughs> that would make me think maybe, well, are you really experience the same God so that, that I'm experiencing? Here's, here's the answer I give to that. When it comes to heaven, there are animals in heaven. So, like, there every are. animal we have down here on earth is up in heaven. So, like, there's dogs, there's cats, there's lions, there's giraffes, there's bears. There's almost every animal we have down here is up in heaven. I mean, I remember I got to play with lions while I was in heaven. That was pretty cool. I can't do that down here without getting seriously mauled or injured. Um, another animal that I saw <laughs> you, in heaven that was pretty cool. You talk about playing with lions. Made me mm -hmm. think of Tiger. What was, that? what was that movie on Netflix or the show on Tiger King? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh i was hoping to leave that back in 2020 oh my gosh that's uh, but, hilarious but yeah You're and like then him, huh? i also got to see <laughs> jesus's rainbow horse or at least it's jesus's white horse with rainbow colored hair 
But is it like really rainbow or is it just like flowing, like changing colors? Well, in heaven, there are more colors than there are down here on earth. So I just described it as rainbow horse because there was a lot of colors in there. So Jesus has a horse with a colorful mane. I'm just going to say mm-hmm. colorful mane because mm-hmm. I have a hard time envisioning my Lord and Savior riding a horse with a rainbow. <laughs> but hey, whatever it is, I don't really care. Whatever heaven is, heaven is. I can't wait to. Uh, it's well, it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be amazing. But so he rides a horse around, you're saying? Well, Jesus, he, he has a horse that he rides on. He doesn't ride it around everywhere, but he can. Are there automobiles? I don't remember. But you would say you don't need it because you can fly. Yeah. I mean, I was three. I couldn't drive anyway. So yeah. hmm. I will say playing tag with wings, that changes the game. <laughs> this conversation blows me away. I got to say. All right. Well, I should probably wrap it up soon because I know you wanted to kind of. Well, I want to respect we, your time. I mean, I, I could talk about this forever, but hey. it, it is pretty fascinating. Um, I, I've really enjoyed having you on, Colton. Mm-hmm. I love your your attitude. I, it, it takes somebody, in my in my estimation, it takes somebody very brave, um, to, to put themselves out there and 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 to, talk about the things that you've experienced. Mm-hmm. And, and to also, here, here's what I really appreciate, appreciate about you. I mean, I've, I've said some things that, uh, could have upset you. I've said mm-hmm. some things that, that could have, um, been taken as disrespectful, mm-hmm. um, in the sense that maybe you don't fully, I don't fully believe this or mm-hmm. this is uh, how can, you know, those type of things. And, and you just have a great way about yourself of, of, and this, this to me, the comp, the, the confidence that you have, mm-hmm. uh, actually gives me even more confidence as, as I think about what you've experienced is that like, it's like, you're just unwavering. It's like, yeah, you, you can throw anything at me, but I know what I experienced. You said that to me, um, before we had a, we had a quick conversation before the mm-hmm. podcast, maybe three minutes. And, and you were like, um, it's my testimony. It's what I experienced. You can't yeah. take it from me. And I tell people that all the time with our faith mm-hmm. um, in ordinary men is there's great power in our testimony and there's great power in our story. And more people are one to Christ through someone's experience and their testimony of that experience mm-hmm. than will ever. Well, I don't know if anybody's ever won through an argument. No. Um, and so you can't take that away from someone, their experience. Mm-hmm. You can't take it away. And, uh, and I, I just think you're a genuine guy. Um, I think you're sincere. I don't think you have Thank an you. ulterior motive other than to glorify God with the story. Mm-hmm. And that's what your life shows me. Um, in fact, I went to church with you for two and a half, three years before I even knew that you were the guy. Yeah. Like I, I, my kids actually came back from youth and were like, Hey, you know that movie heaven is for real. Yeah. He helps out with you, with youth. I said, well, no, there's no way. And so that's just the type it's of hard guy to recognize are. me now. I kind of have a little bit of facial fuzz trying to, trying to hide. Yeah. Just well, kidding. no, but you, <laughs> you, you, got, you got more than fuzz, but, um, but, but my point is, I, I just want to compliment you in that, that, um, I don't mm-hmm. see you as somebody that's out trying to, um, make themselves glorified through some experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though there was a movie made about you, a book written about you, you're just so down to earth, so sincere and genuine, really appreciate that about you. Thank you. And uh, I would love to dig in more about what it was like to be in the presence of God, mm-hmm. in the presence of Jesus, mm-hmm. um, maybe outside of this podcast, but we could maybe do another or podcast. Or maybe another future. podcast. That's yeah, right. I was like, you got that. Time. Yeah, yeah. But for sure. if there is, or at least one thing that I'd kind of like to close it out or just like yeah, please do. kind of talk with the audience a little bit. or Yeah. So there's a few things that I do remember that I think are very important, or at least things that kind of stick with me daily. Um, And for me, there are two conversations that I had with Jesus while I was in heaven. And the first conversation was, Colton, this is how you get to heaven. If you love me and follow me, my dad's okay with that. So Jesus keeps it very simple, but it is very complicated to follow. Like, for you to love Jesus and to follow him. It sounds simple, but it is really hard, especially in the world we live in, where 
people try to tell you this is what's right, this is what's wrong, this is what you need to do, and to live a life where you're actually following after Jesus, where people are able to tell that this man has been with God. It is, I will say, it is a hard thing to do, but it is so worth it. So for anybody that's listening, like, I encourage you, like, when you do decide to follow Jesus, you do gain an enemy. Because Satan, he is not in hell yet. When he got kicked out of heaven, he got kicked here to earth. So you do experience a little bit of the spiritual side or those spiritual attacks. They do come. However, the amazing thing is, is when you decide to love and follow Jesus, you, do, you decide to make him your Lord that he walks with you, that he helps you in the midst of the hard situations, that he will be there. He might not deliver you from the hard things, but he will help you walk through it. Because so many times, the hard things that we walk through, on the other side, we're able to share that, and that's what helps deliver people. That's what helps heal people. Because our testimony is how we overcome the world, besides the blood of the Lamb. So our testimony, how... We share how we have walked this life, how we have served the Lord faithfully in spite of all the circumstances around us speaks volumes. And the second conversation with Jesus that I want to get into before I kind of wrap it up is I remember I asked Jesus one time, I was like, Jesus, how can you still have markers? Because in heaven, everybody was young, they were healthy, nobody needed glasses, everybody was good, but Jesus still had the wounds on his hands on the tops of his feet. And I remember that he got down on a knee, he looked me right in the eyes, and he said, Colton, it's to remind me how much I love you. And the amazing thing with that is (laughs) this is God. Like, if he wanted to, he could close up those wounds whenever he wants, but he keeps them around. And for me, um, one of the ways that God does speak to me is, I guess you could call it visions, or I like to call them mini-movies in my head. Um, And I remember a few years back, I was going through just a really rough time, um, just having a hard time with life, kind of adjusting to what adulting is, all that fun stuff. And I remember... When I was kind of in a hard place, I just was spending time with God, and I kind of saw this mini-movie play out in my head where what happened is there was a man who got hurt, and instead of asking for help right away, he just decided to pick up a shovel and start digging himself a hole. And as he dug deeper and deeper and deeper, he wasn't really getting anywhere. He was just going deeper. And when people would come up and talk with him, try and ask him, hey, how are you doing? He felt like he had to put on a mask and go, I'm doing great. How are you? And on the inside, he felt broken. He felt hurt, felt empty. And finally, something clicks for the man. While he's in the hole, he realizes Jesus is there. But Jesus isn't at the top of the hole, reaching his arm down, shouting, I can take you out of this. No, Jesus is in the hole with the man. He just reaches out his hand and says, give it to me. The man slaps away Jesus' hand saying, no, Jesus, I got this. Picks up the shovel, digs some more. Finally, he throws down the shovel. Just body is sore, aching, can't do anymore, and just collapses. Jesus puts out his hand again and says, give it to me. So finally, the man just reaches up grabs Jesus' hand. What I remember is almost like zoomed in on the hand and Jesus flipped over his hand and through the marker, he saw the man. He saw me. The reason why he was willing to die on a cross was for us so that we could have a right relationship with his dad. And I'm not sure at least when it comes to all the people listening to this podcast, I'm not sure what you've had to walk through, all the pain you have experienced, whether from people inside the church, whether from the world or just from life. 
But what I want you to know is that there is a God that he loves you so much. He wants to have a relationship with you. And he is bigger than any situation that you are in. He wants to heal you. He wants to help you. And I would just encourage you to continue to just seek him. Because God is real. If you ask him, like, Lord, I want to know you. I want to experience you. That is a, that's a prayer that he will answer. And I also believe, or at least when it comes to this Ordinary Discussions podcast, I know that you get to kind of minister or talk with a lot of men, women, who probably feel like they just kind of, they're ordinary, they don't have really anything going on in life. But the amazing thing is, is we have been placed in special places by God, Mm -hmm. that we are a light in very dark places. Yeah. Not all of us have to be in ministry. We don't have to like be on a stage preaching at crusades. We could be at a job. We could yeah. be a teacher. But because we have the Holy Spirit living in us, we are able to be a light in very dark places. So I would just encourage all of you that God will use you. All you have to do is be available You don't have to have everything put together. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to experience all the stuff. Like, As long as you are available and willing to just serve God and ask, okay, how can I honor God? How can I help people? That's a prayer. That's a mindset that really helps you live a blessed life or at least helps you get out of your own thoughts. But yeah. Yeah. It's great, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time, uh, your words, your your care. And um, yeah, we'll do it again sometime soon. Absolutely. Everyone, thank you so much for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. I know, man, it was uh, definitely, there's not many that we'll have that are, uh, that we'll talk about heaven like this for sure. So uh, pretty exciting. So uh, make sure you uh, tune in for next time and uh, subscribe if you haven't. And uh, until next time, let's do this. See you.